all my name is ashutosh jastogi i am a teacher by profession my mission is to impart quality education for all for that purpose i am creating these videos if you appreciate my work then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that i could get the motivation to prepare more videos anyways today in this particular lecture we will try to give the brief introduction about your angle modulation so these are the outline we will going to start up with the introduction then we will going to describe angle modulation what it is and what are its various types such as your frequency modulation and phase modulation then we will try to give a comparison between your fm as well as your phase modulation then finally we will going to conclude by discussing some of the points about your angle modulated wave so in our earlier lectures we have discussed about your am systems along with their generation as well as your detection mechanism so we have taken the complete insight about your amplitude modulated systems where we will going to transmit our information through the amplitude variation so in am information is transmitted through the amplitude variation and due to additive white gaussian noise it affects your am systems a lot since the nature of your awgn is your additive so it will simply going to add it up over your amplitude variation and uh, due to this amplitude variation at the receiving side we are getting some distorted outcome just because we are basically transmitting our message signal through the amplitude variation and we really wanted that this amplitude variation is solely due to the message signal variation but since noise will going to add it up and it will further going to change the signal amplitude so obviously distortion will be there while reception so now we will try to study the another type of modulation which is much superior to your am obviously in terms of quality we are talking about so continuous wave modulation is of two type that is your amplitude modulation and your angle modulation we have already discussed that uh, modulation is the process in which we will going to transmit our information through some continuous carrier wave and if we will going to vary the carrier signal's amplitude with respect to the amplitude of your message signal then that would have been termed as your amplitude modulation conversely what another thing we can do is for transmitting our signal through high frequency carrier is we can modify or change its angle with respect to the amplitude variation of your message signal so this would have been termed as your angle modulation so here st is the signal that would have been given as your a sin theta so this is your generalized signal where this a is representing your amplitude and theta is representing this angle so in your amplitude modulation we will going to vary this a or you could say your amplitude and in your angle modulation we will going to modify our angle value theta with respect to the message signal so when the angle of the carrier is varied according to the instantaneous value of the modulating signal or message signal it is called as your angle modulation so now angle modulation may further be subdivided into two parts basically we can modify the angle values by two methods that is either we could change its frequency or we could change its phase so in both the cases our angle part will going to get modified if we will going to producing some changes in your carrier signals frequency then that modulation technique would have been termed as your frequency modulation and if we will going to produce certain changes in the phase angle of your carrier signal with respect to the amplitude of your message signal then it would have been termed as your phase modulation so st will be equal to a sin of 2 pi fct plus theta so what i'm trying to say is that is how we can avail this angle modulation either we could produce certain changes in this frequency value or this phase value phi so in both the cases we will basically going to change or vary the angle so that is why the name angle modulation comes up so in angle modulation basically the instantaneous frequency or phase of the carrier are varied in accordance with the message signal so this is the key point or this is the major insight about your angle modulation so this particular figure is basically showing your uh, angle modulation process this angle modulator block one side will be having your message signal t and second input is your carrier signal ct which is your high frequency signal and at the output side we are receiving this uh, st value that will be equal to a sin 2 pi fct plus phi where this angle value would have been modified with respect to this message signal xt so this is how we will going to produce this angle modulated waveform so what we actually do in your angle modulation we have to study further so variation of the instantaneous value of the frequency of carrier wave with respect to the instantaneous value of your amplitude of the message signal is termed as the frequency modulation one more time i would like to make it clear that in all the modulation process we always going to take the instantaneous amplitude of your 
message signal since in your analog signal actual information would have been contained in your energy or power of that particular signal which is having the direct relationship with your amplitude and the sole requirement of any communication system is to transfer maximum amount of information from source to the destination so that is why we always going to take the amplitude of your modulating signal or message signal so this particular figure is basically showing your carrier signal along with your message signal so this green color signal is basically representing your high frequency signal which will going to serve as your carrier signal and this red color is basically representing your modulating signal or message signal so if this is the case then how our frequency modulated wave would going to look like it will going to look like this that is in your frequency modulation your frequency will going to get vary as per the amplitude variation in your message signal that is when amplitude value is increasing then frequency value will going to get increased and if amplitude value is decreasing then frequency value will get decreased so this is the basic insight of your frequency modulation that is how our frequency modulated waveform will going to look like whereas in your phase modulation the variation of the instantaneous value of the phase of carrier wave with respect to the instantaneous value of the amplitude of the message signal is termed as your phase modulation that is in this particular case we will basically going to change the phase angle value with respect to the instantaneous magnitude or amplitude of my message signal so by this method the wave that we will going to get is your phase modulated waveform so this particular figure is basically showing your high frequency carrier signal which is having your constant amplitude and fixed frequency signal and this particular signal is basically showing your uh, message signal or modulating signal which is of sinusoidal type then the outcome of this uh, phase modulation system would have been given by this particular figure here we can easily demarcate that as per the amplitude variation of my message signal phase angle value will get modified or changed whenever we will be having this high amplitude of our uh, message signal there will be having this compressed sort of waveform and as the message signal value will going to get decreased we will be getting this lower frequency waveform sort of signal so via simply observing the waveform of any angle modulated waveform it is very hard to say that whether it is your frequency modulated waveform or phase modulated waveform so now this particular slide is basically showing your uh, frequency modulation versus phase modulation so in your frequency modulation instantaneous frequency of the carrier is varied from its reference value by an amount proportional to the modulating signal amplitude so that is in this fm what we will going to do is we will going to vary or change our carrier signal frequency which is proportional to your message signal whereas in your phase modulation the phase angle of your carrier signal is varied with respect to the instantaneous amplitude of your message signal that is as the amplitude of your message signal will going to vary its phase angle will also going to get vary so here in your fm if we'll going to vary the carrier frequency directly it will going to vary the phase carrier indirectly whereas in your uh, phase modulation when we will going to vary the phase of the carrier directly it will going to vary the frequency of the carrier which is indirectly varied since angle is the combination of both its frequency as well as phase that is why we have mentioned that it is very difficult to observe that which particular angle modulation is that is either it is your phase or frequency so it is very difficult to demarcate that which particular angle modulation wave is for your frequency modulation and which particular waveform is for your phase modulation so both must occur whenever either form of angle modulation is performed so actually we will going to get this hybrid modulated wave that is the wave we will going to obtain is it is the combination of frequency modulation as well as your phase modulation irrespective of the fact that whatever technique we are being utilizing so this particular figure a is basically representing your high frequency carrier signal which is your constant amplitude and high frequency signal this b part is basically representing your message signal this is a sinusoidal type starting from zero moving towards your top then again it is degrading so this is a sinusoidal sort of signal then this particular figure c is basically representing your frequency modulated waveform that is here at this particular portion we will going to get this carrier signal frequency as it is and after that when message signal would have been applied to your uh, modulator then in that particular case as your message signal value will get increasing in the same proportion our frequency value will also get modified 
Here, one point I have been mentioned that if we will going to increase our message signal or as per the increment in my message signal, our frequency will going to increase. But this is not always be the case. The important point is our frequency will get modified or changed proportionally with respect to your message signal. So we can have this inverse relationship also. That is as message signal is keep on increasing, our frequency value is proportionally decreased. And if our message signal value is uh, decreasing, then with proportionality, our carrier frequency will get increased as it is shown by this particular figure. So conceptually, both of these things are correct. But in general terms, for the sake of simplicity, we will going to follow this sort of standard. That is, if message signal value will get increased, our frequency modulated waveform frequency will also get increased and as our message signal value will going to get decreased it will going to result in your lower frequency in your fm so this is just for the sake of convenience so this fourth figure that is d is basically representing the phase modulated waveform here the phase angle of your carrier signal will get modified proportionally with respect to the signal variation in your message signal. So this particular figure is basically showing your phase modulated waveform. So now we're going to discuss the few important points about your angle modulated waveform. So first of all, carrier amplitude remains constant, which is not the case while we studied your AM signal. In that particular case, your amplitude value will going to get changed. So we have already seen your uh, phase modulated waveform as well as frequency modulated waveform, the peak amplitude will going to remain same. Carrier frequency is changed by modulating signal since we really wanted to transfer our information from source to destination and information is lying in your message signal. So carrier frequency should change with respect to the modulating signal or message signal. So as the amplitude of information signal varies, the carrier frequency also shifts proportionately. Please focus on this particular term proportionately. This particular term explains the previous waveform of your FM. Modulating signal amplitude increases, the carrier frequency increases. This is the first case, but vice versa is also true. Modulating signal amplitude varies, the carrier frequency varies below and above its normal center or resting frequency with no modulation. So obviously, since our message signal is varying from lower value to the peak value and then again coming down to the lowest value and then again increasing. So that is why if you are talking about your frequency modulated waveform, here also we will be having some varying frequency signal which will going to vary from your central carrier value to your highest peak and then further it will going to go below from its normal central carrier frequency. So where the original carrier frequency is basically signifying that there will be no modulation or in that particular case either we haven't applied any information signal or at that particular point your message signal value will be equal to zero. So the amount of the change in the carrier frequency produced by the modulating signal is known as your frequency deviation. So it is basically your maximum frequency variation that we obtained in your frequency modulated waveform which is proportional to your signal variation. So maximum frequency deviation occurs at the maximum amplitude of the modulating signal. Since it is the difference from its resting frequency to one of the peak value, so that is why we will going to get this maximum frequency deviation at these particular points only. So the frequency of the modulated signal determines the frequency deviation rate, which is nothing but your d omega over dt. That is frequency variation over time is directly proportional to your instantaneous amplitude of your message signal. So these are few points about your angle modulated waveform. In our upcoming lectures, we will going to discuss all of them in much greater detail. Hopefully you guys have get the insight about your uh, angle modulation. In case of any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. I'll try to solve them out as soon as possible. So these are the references. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.